it may be as well here to cite the great hadith of wilaya and when we speak about education in Islam this is our objective because this wilaya is none other than the Adamic state of Khilafah there's no difference perfection is perfection and this is the great hadith Qudsi narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu <coughs> in Bukhari and the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqala fi ma yarwihi ar rabbihi jalla wa ala man adha li waliyan faqad adhantuhu bil harb this is the great momentous prophetic definition of who is this perfected human being who is this wali the educated person and in this hadith Qudsi Allah is telling us whoever makes war on a wali of mine I declare war on him so watch out وَلَا يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ The hadith goes on to say, and describing here the maratib as suluk the stages of wayfaring, the fruits of education, if you like, says, My slave draws near to me with nothing more beloved to me than that which I have made obligatory upon him. In other words, at this beginning stage of Islamic education, The object of Allah's love is the fara'id, the obligations. Allah loves the salat, and the siyam, because these are the instruments by which human beings <coughs> achieve taqarrub, draw near to him. <coughs> and then the register of the, this hadith Qudsi subtly shifts. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدِي يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلْ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهُ And my slave, remember that abd, is the glorious description of the human wayfarer here. My slave continues to draw closer to me through nawafil, optional acts of devotion, until I love him. So at the second stage, the love is not for the ibadat, for the fara'id, the love is for the one who is practicing those practices. The salik, the abd. This is the maqam of mahabba. And all authentic religion has this emotion close to its heart. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his title in the hadith is Habibullah. All of the prophets, the great prophets, in the sound hadith are given names. Sayyidina Musa is Kalimullah. Sayyidina Nuh is Najiullah, the one saved by Allah. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam is Ruhullah, spirit of Allah. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is Khalilullah, the intimate of Allah. What is the title of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? It's Habibullah, the beloved of Allah. And this is an indication of his state. <coughs> through this taraqi, this process of growth, of inward education to this great state of mahabba which is the condition of the wali because the Qur'an itself says in the awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa la hum yahzanun <coughs> Allah's awliya <coughs> no fear shall come upon them, neither shall they grieve for this definition before that is what a wali is and it's the opposite of our condition as modern Muslims we're full of fear and we're full of grief we're terrified of America and we're terrified of the Israelis and the Indian government and uh, the economic system and global debt and God knows what it's not the way of the Sahaba and it's not the way of the wali he is not afraid except of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he knows that Allah is the one with the names the one who is the true agent in, in the cosmos but to the extent that we are uneducated, we forget that. We move away from Khilafah, we move away from Wilaya, and we get scared. Because we think that those things truly have the power to hurt us. <coughs> it's not the case. No khawf. One of the 
early Sufis, Al-Allama al-Shibli radiallahu anhu, was once by an unjust ruler thrown to the lions. To the extent that a lion <coughs> took his head in the lion's mouth. It was Allah's decree that the saint should be saved and afterwards he was asked, Ya Shaykh, what were you thinking about when your head was in the lion's mouth? And he, was said, he said, I was trying to remember the Sharia ruling on the purity of lion saliva. Hmm? That's what he was worried about. He was worried about continuing to follow the Sharia to the end and Allah would look after everything else. That was his fear. His fear was only for violating the Sharia, not for any phenomenon in Allah's creation. If Allah wished to take his soul, that was Allah's decree and he had ridha, state of serene, trusting acceptance of Allah's decree which used to be the watchword of the Muslim world. Remember the old idea of oriental repose, fatalism, those not quite accurate characterizations that 19th century travelers applied to our societies. We were the people of Tawakkul and the people of Rida. We were not afraid of anything except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَاهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And they don't grieve. In other words, in their lack of khawf, they declare their knowledge that the future is in Allah's hands. Khawf is about what might happen, it's about the future. وَلَاهُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ And they declare by not grieving that the past is in Allah's hands as well. Because huzn is for what has happened in the past. So future and past, it's all in Allah's hands because He is the Omnipotent. We believe in an Omnipotent God. And that's the state of the Wali. He knows everything is in good hands. Nowadays, Allahu A'lam, hardly any Ummah seems to have more khawf and more huzn than the Ummah of Islam. This kind of panic seems to have set in. Everybody's ganging up on us. Paranoia. This has nothing to do with the spirit of Islam and it's an impugning of the very principle of Tawheed. We should be the Ummah of Tawakkul. Of all peoples, we should know that history is in good hands and that we have nothing to worry about. We have nothing to worry about. <coughs> Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and our relationship with Him. We should look to our Tahara. We should look to our Ibadah. We should look to fulfilling all of those aspects of Sharia which, is, which it is humanly possible for us to operationalize in our context but we should not be worrying about global Masonic conspiracies and threats of this, that and the other kind because that's chimera, that's part of the zulumat, the shadows it has no reality, it has no energy, no inertia of its own whatsoever the dynamic principle of the cosmos is exclusively divine providence amazing that we should have lost sight of this but the Ummah is becoming an Ummah of jaza, of panic. To get back to the Hadith Qudsi. فَإِذَا <coughs> أَحْبَبْتُهُ Allah is saying, and when I have loved him, the Wali, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهِ I become the hearing with which he hears. وَبَصَرَهُ الَّذِي يُبْصِرُ بِهِ the sight with which he sees. وَيَدَهُ الَّتِي يَبَطِشُ بِهَا And the hand with which he strikes. وَرِجْلَهُ الَّتِي يَمْشِي عَلَيْهَا And the foot upon which he walks. وَلَئِنِ اسْتَنْصَرَنِي لَأَنْصُرَنَّ وَلَئِنِ اسْتَعَاذَ بِي لَأُعِذَنَّ And if he seeks victory from me, I shall surely grant him victory. And if he seeks my protection, I shall surely grant him protection. Again an allusion to the future and to the past, the maqams of, 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 of khawf and huzn which are to be moved beyond. Because if, if the wali prays for victory, hmm, this is the emphatic form of the Arabic, I shall surely grant him victory and this is the secret of the victories incomprehensible to the secular historian that were granted to the Sahaba if you look at their achievement, there is no social science on earth that can explain that achievement. It is entirely miraculous. And 
the Sahaba, when they set off on those extraordinary adventures, did not say, well, the Byzantines are strong and the Sassanids are strong and maybe we're at danger. They didn't think in those terms at all. And Allah gives them the victory, the most improbable conquest in history. The most people who had historically been the most divided, warring amongst themselves, with no history of law and of government amongst themselves, immediately become the rulers of the entire ancient world. That was because of, uh, those people were awliya, as defined by this, this hadith. Allah's promise is here. I will give you victory hmm, if you seek victory from me. And if you seek protect protection from me, I will give you protection. Now this hadith really <coughs> encompasses the remedy for the problems of the Muslim ummah. Hmm. The fara'id, get those right, and the wafil, get those right, really right, and then you will be in this maqam of mahabba, in the joyous, loving relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everything else sorts itself out, and you'll see that all of the apparent difficulties and obstacles in the world are illusions, shadows, compared to the, the power of Allah. But somehow we have gone down the modern path of attributing real power real hawl and real quwa to what is other than Allah. It's not the way of Tawheed. Tawheed, when truly internalizes, brings about a sense of absolute serenity. And that's why it's referred to as al-nafsul mutma'inna, the soul at peace. The final solution to all problems of stress, nervousness, agitation. Then you'll be found in Remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that He is one. By His remembrance, hearts are made tranquil. By nothing else. Everything else in the dunya is tugging at you and tugging against each other. It's a web of tensions and rivalries. Peace, sakina, is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The nearer you get to the center, the more harmony there is. Go to the periphery to maximum multiplicity and plurality, and there is only strife, rivalry, warfare, disharmony.